we'll be talking about the science of skin, acne, aging, and rashes. Make sure you stay tuned right until the end of today's show because I have some exciting things happening. First of all, we'll be talking about some great recipes, which I will share with you for your natural beauty products that you can actually make at home, completely natural, so good for your skin. We'll also be doing some facial yoga exercises together. Yes, we will. It's going to be great. And I will also share a meditation for healthy and glowing beautiful skin so it's going to be a great episode today and thanks for joining me if you're new here welcome to the dr janine show be sure that you subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications by clicking that bell and you're going to love this because we talk all things natural at the dr janine show and skin being a beauty topic we know is very important to all of us and certainly if you've got or you've developed issues with your skin this I know is very concerning not only does it concern you in the way that you feel but in the way that you look and the two go hand in hand so we're going to dispel all those myths and I'm give you I'll be giving you some great tips as to how to heal your skin no matter what is plaguing your skin so let's start it off with how your skin works so let's talk about the skin microbiome so if you've heard me talk before about the microbiome this is the ecology and the good and the bad bacteria. Now we know that we have the microbiome in our guts, but we also have a skin microbiome and it's important to find that right balance and diversity of those microorganisms that are live organisms and bacteria that actually live on our skin surface. Now let's take a look at what the skin actually looks like in the physiology of our skin. Here we can see that in in healthy skin we have our collagen and elastin fibers and they should really be running uniformly across in this way but here that you can see that they've actually become quite disorganized and they don't have that uniform structure and this is what over time then will lead to the wrinkling of the skin we can see it's not nice and smooth but with aging we can see that that wrinkling is happening because of that loss of elasticity a lot of those microorganisms so that microbiome on the surface of the skin has a lot to do with maintaining our healthy collagen and our elastin as well. And we can see that these have become out of balance. So that's not what we want in terms of rashes and acne. We want to maintain that proper balance. And I'm going to get to a study now and I'm going to show you that in the study, what was found was that the skin microbiome is related to skin disease and more specifically what they talked about in this study is that the imbalance or the perturbation of the microbial populations on the skin had an influence and maybe the causes of things like atopic dermatitis psoriasis acne and rosacea so yes that correlation with the skin microbiome is very important in terms of the health of our skin so because of our skin microbiome we want to avoid using harsh products that can offset this balance of our microflora on our skin surface and that's why a lot of the conventional treatments for using skin washes and treatments can be very harsh and yes they may kill off some of those bad organisms but they offset that proper balance and this is why the acne and the rashes can often come back so the good news is is that there are natural things that you can do and I have one which is fantastic especially for acne and it's called the natural acne spot treatment so that's another video here on YouTube I want you to check it out it's something that my own teenagers use and they absolutely love it I have to mix it up for their friends all the time so it really is an overnight spot treatment that will make the acne spots completely disappear and dry up overnight it is incredible so make sure that you check out that video also you always want to be using you know in terms of natural products whatever you can put in your mouth is what you should be putting on your skin if you think about it that way and that's why in other recipes that you know we'll get to in a second that's exactly what I'm all about whatever you know you're putting on your skin should be as natural as possible so you're not offsetting that healthy skin microbiome now some what are some of the causes of bad skin well we have environmental causes so pollution is a big factor and the pollutants that we had even 50 years ago were not 
not as heavy and as, as much of a problem as the ones that we have in our today's industrialized world. So the air is toxic and those pollutants do affect our skin. So this is why, you know, when we get to the tips, I'm going to talk about detoxification and why that's so important. So studies have shown that air pollution and the aging effect is definitely correlated. And in this study, we can see that the association between traffic related air pollution and skin aging has definitely been correlated with one another. So that's an, an important factor. We have to, we can't get away from the pollution often, but what we're doing to mitigate those risks of that air pollution is important in terms of detoxification, which I, I promise we'll get to in our tips. Also EMF exposure. So if you missed the show, I talked a lot about EMFs and what they are. So electromagnetic frequencies that we get, and these are the non-native ones. So not the natural ones we get from the sun and from the electromagnetism of the earth, but from our cell phones and from that radiation exposure that we all have due to all these devices devices and technology that we have around us, this is aging our skin. And this is something that whether it's for aging, whether it's in terms of offsetting the proper functioning of our mitochondria, these things are definitely related. And what goes along with that is that blue light. And studies have shown that that blue light induces, and we can see in this study, the oxidative stress and the damage in the skin. So in this study, they looked at blue light that could produce oxidative stress in live skin skin and that oxidative stress definitely affected the mitochondria and that of course is where our energy is made in our bodies and our mitochondria are important, probably the most important cells that we have in our body. So in terms of the aging process, this is something definitely, and they found and they stated in this study that the, the research suggests that the blue light contributes to skin aging similar to UVA damage from the sun. And we always think, okay, get out of the sun, get out of the sun. This is, yeah, big misnomers. And that's not always the 100% truth when we talk about the health of our skin, which we'll get to in the tips, but also, you know, it's it's important to get natural sunlight exposure, which I'm going to get to. But it's important to know that, yeah, that same kind of over exposure to the sun's rays can cause aging. We know this absolutely, but the same effects with that blue light radiation from our devices. So we have to, whatever we can do to decrease that exposure, it will help with the health of our skin. Also stress. So we know that stress definitely is a factor with a lot of things that can go, you know, out of balance in our bodies. But definitely stressful, you know, lives definitely do not help the health of our skin. So whatever we can do to decrease our stress will definitely help our skin as well. Lack of sleep. So when our skin is relaxed, our whole body is relaxed when we're sleeping, that's when our skin and our tissues in our body are detoxifying and regenerating. So making sure that we get that restful night's sleep is really important for the health of our skin. And there's something new now called mask knee. So so anybody who's wearing a mask, and a lot of people are more so than in previous, you know, times that even if you're not in the medical establishment, we're wearing masks and even children are wearing masks and that can cause mask knee. So the, the acne that accumulates because of the friction, because of the breathing in and the less air circulation behind the mask that can really cause problems for so many people. Also, there are nutritional causes of bad skin. So certainly, yes, your diet does have an influence on what's happening with what we see on the outside in our skin. And some of the big culprits are too much sugar in the diet. So make sure you check out my episode on sugar addiction if you, you know, may know or don't know that you have a problem with being addicted to sugar. This will really help you to be able to get off of that sugar and we have some great you know tips and tricks as to how to do that in an easier way because I know every I love sugar myself and you know it's difficult to sometimes be able to abstain from having it or to be able to to control yourself just to have small amounts so that you can still enjoy it in moderation like everything in life but it definitely is correlated with you know bad skin as well also if you're deficient in certain nutrients so vitamin Vitamin C is very important for our collagen and our, our elastin fibers, so for the anti-aging benefits of vitamin C, but also vitamin D. And this is where, you know, it's a big misconception that we shouldn't be in the sun. We need natural vitamin D, ideally from the sun 
in moderation. And again, sometimes we need to go to supplementation to ensure that we have enough vitamin D because that lack of vitamin D is definitely, again, in the research, definitely correlated to, you know, lack of having good and healthy skin. So welcome in. If you're just joining me, my name is Dr. Janine Baring. I'm a naturopathic doctor. And today I'm talking all about having healthy skin and what we can do to get the healthiest skin ever. So here are nine things that your skin can tell you about your health. So number one is acne. Now acne, you know, depending on where it's happening on your face, can be correlated to the toxicity related to your internal organs. So for instance, if you're breaking out here, this can be related to your lungs. If you're breaking out on your chin area, this could be related to your hormones, also to the large intestine because your large intestine is actually mapped on your chin area. And if you're breaking out here all the time, it could be related to a toxic colon. So if you're constipated, often you're gonna get you know the big zits here. And it's interesting how the body is just like your hands in reflexology, if that's something that you've studied, is mapped in terms of your internal organs, the bottom of your feet are mapped to your internal organs, but so is your face. And it's something that I share in my second book that I wrote in The Healthy Millionaire, the sequel. And I actually put the picture of the face mask, which we can see here, that shows you where the different organs are associated with our internal organs. Now, another thing that your skin can be telling you about your health is that internal toxicity, which I had mentioned previous. So skin rashes and things like eczema and psoriasis could again be manifested because now your internal organs have become overwhelmed with toxicity. Often this comes from the lungs, but it could be liver toxicity, lung toxicity. And now those toxins are spilling to the outside. They're coming to the surface. They're coming to your skin to be eradicated. So again, we have to think of detoxification when we're wanting to have clear skin. Now yeast it would be another thing that your you know your skin is telling you that there's an imbalance and whether it's you know number three on my list is yeast or number four ringworm these are both fungal issues and that again is pointing me towards thinking about your microbiome on your skin and often it's related to your gut microbiome as well and what is happening internally and it's something that I've talked about in other videos in terms of dysbiosis we want to make sure that we have the proper balance we don't want to have too many of the bad guys we want to have that proper balance so that we're not developing stage three and stage four dysbiosis in our body whether it's on the skin or also in our guts as well now number five is rosacea so acne rosacea that occurs on the face is often related again to our internal environment often related to our stomach and how our stomach is digesting food or maybe not digesting food so well. Another thing is dry skin. So if you are prone to having dry skin, this would tell me that there is maybe an imbalance in essential fatty acids. So you may be lacking in DHA. You could be lacking in water. So ensuring that we get enough hydration every single day is very important as well. And now another thing, number seven is oily skin. So, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, if there's a lot of oil on the skin, often you're actually lacking in oils. So it's a huge misconception that by putting some healthy oils on the skin that that would cause you to be more oily. It actually is the opposite. By putting healthy skin oils on the skin, it actually can turn down that oiliness because it tells your skin that enough oil is present. You no longer need to produce more oil. Another thing that can be plaguing your skin is aging skin. So yes, I know that's why a lot of you may have tuned into this program today and what can we do to stay looking youthful you know for as long as possible well if your skin is aging too rapidly it could be because of you know the blue light that's coming at you in terms of the aging process from all the devices it could be from stress it could be from another a number of factors that we're talking about today and another thing is dandruff so ninth on my list is dandruff and dandruff is related to again a dysbiosis so an imbalance 
you've got some itchiness, often it's fungally related, so too much sugar in the diet, that would be, you know, one of those indications that your body is, would be telling me, you know, when I'm trying to diagnose or to kind of delve in to find out what the root cause of uh, that problem is, that with dandruff, often that tells me there's a bit too much sugar happening in the diet. So now let's talk about the weekly skincare tips for glowing and healthy skin. So what can you do every day, every week to ensure that you have glowing skin? So tip number one is drink more water and the type of water that you drink is very important so you want to make sure that there's no fluoride in the water and in most countries unfortunately they dump fluoride into the water systems because it's actually a byproduct of the aluminum industry and at some point somebody said oh yeah it's okay we don't know where else to put it let's put it in the in the drinking water and yes fluoride does help with the the strength of our teeth but it also ossifies other things in our body and this is not so good because it gets into the pineal gland and causes a problem with pineal gland function which is important for our you know all of our brain function and our melatonin levels so make sure that you're drinking water that does not contain fluoride and a good way to get it out of the system is reverse osmosis water but you always have to add minerals back into that water but just make sure that you're drinking enough water and this will help with getting that glowing and healthy skin. Tip number two is to ensure that you have your vitamins covered. So vitamin C is a big one, which I discussed earlier, and vitamin D, of course, as well. So getting natural sunlight exposure in moderation, especially around noontime when the UVA and UVB is the highest is important. But you want ideally want to get all the spectrum of the sun rays into your daily routine so that early morning sun which is something that i talk a lot about is important on the skin at noon time for the vitamin d and the uva uvb exposure and in the evening for the far infrared and the infrared rays that are coming from the sun rays are very healing to the skin as well so you and they are very anti-aging so you want to get that full spectrum so ideally three times a day exposure as much as you can of your skin surface is really healing to your skin. I have a study that shows us here that with vitamin D this is important because the higher our serum vitamin D concentrations are this has a lot to do with the length of our telomeres and the telomere length is a sign of anti-aging and so in this study it shows that those higher vitamin D concentrations were associated with the longer leukocyte telomere lengths and that is good news so yes we all if we can't get enough sun exposure then we definitely have to ensure that we're getting enough vitamin D either dietarily or of course from a good quality supplement. Tip number three for weekly skincare tips for glowing and healthy skin is dietary changes. So yes, I talked about decreasing your sugar intake, which is important, and getting you know less addicted to sugar. And often this is a leptin problem, so be sure to check out my show all about leptin, where I discuss you know why you could be gravitating towards sugar all the time. It's because you're craving it because your body's out of balance and you have leptin resistance, and your brain simply and getting that, those signals that it's supposed to that you've been well fed so this is you know easy to correct there is a bit of a protocol there but I want you to check that out especially if you're trying to lose weight anyway and you know and you're getting your hormones under control the leptin show will be very important for you to watch tip number four is to get better sleep so yes you definitely want to have that restful night's sleep this is when our skin repairs itself this is when we have regeneration of our skin cells this is you know for beautiful glowing skin this is really important to have enough sleep because beauty sleep and getting your beauty sleep or your beauty rest is a real thing and you will see changes in your skin once you really start to get you know a good night's sleep Tip number five is to balance your hormones. So whether you're a man or a woman, we know, you know, as a woman myself, obviously, you know, going through different changes hormonally through pregnancies and through, you know, different stages of my own life, definitely, you know, seeing the skin changes that can occur because of the hormones is definitely, you know, a thing. So finding balance for the hormones is absolutely important in order to, you know, find, and that could be related to acne, that could be related 
related to, you know, different conditions related to the skin that are hormonally based like melasma so you really want to find that balance with the hormones tip number six is to detoxify so detoxification i usually recommend at least four times a year when the seasons are changing is the best way you know to do a full body detox using herbal medicines we can share some links below as to you know a product that i love and and you know to be able to help you with a full body detox get those toxins out it's remarkable what it does for the skin and again when you're healthy and clean on the inside it will only show itself on the outside and your skin will be radiant and glowing tip number seven is to use natural products so here we have and i'm going to show you some great recipes that you can make at home and this is something that you know you can check out my whole playlist on youtube for the beauty recipes that we have but here I'm going to show you a fantastic probiotic face mask that you can make up at home. Often you're going to have these ingredients in your home already. They're easy to find, easy to mix up, and this is something you can do for your own skin. Great for acne, great for that microbiome on your skin to find that balance again. So this is something we recorded earlier in the year. Let's take a look at this now. So this is a fantastic probiotic face mask for acne. It's also really helpful for sunburn and helps to balance combination skin. So if you've got some dryness, but also oily skin, which is often correlated with that acne, this is gonna be fantastic for you. So first I have some yogurt and yogurt is very cooling to the skin. It helps to balance the skin microbiome because of those active live cultures. It also contains lactic acid, which helps with sunburn, but also helps to kill those bad bacteria bacteria, helps to reduce inflammation, and helps to control that oil in the skin. So I'm going to mix that into my bowl as well as some honey. So honey is a natural antibacterial. It's also called a humectant, which means it helps to add moisture to the skin and it has anti-inflammatory effects. So I'm going to mix these together. And now to kick it up a notch, I'm also adding a concentrated probiotic. So this is a supplement. This is Acidophilus ambifidus, some of my favorite strains for the microbiome. And yes, we have a skin microbiome as well. So this is really going to help with balancing that microbiome and helping with the acne. It will help to fight off those bad bacteria as well and those bad organisms, which can then, you know, lend itself to developing the acne in the first place. And now that it's all blended up, you're going to apply this to nice cleansed skin that's still a little bit damp and moist, and you're just gonna apply it all over your skin. And then you're gonna let it dry. So when it's nice and dry, you can leave it on for about 15 minutes or so, then you're going to wash it away and then follow up with your regular skincare routine. For help with that, you can check out our other videos. Thanks for joining me today. So you could see there that that is fantastic in terms of face mask, something that you can easily do. You can do this, you know, more than a couple times a week if you wish to take some time for yourself. No matter what age you are, or if you're a man or a woman, I want you to take that time for yourself and really enjoy and just relax and have that own home spa experience by doing that mask. And remember to check out the playlist as well here on YouTube with my other beauty recipes, all natural ingredients, and it really Really is a huge game changer for your own skin to be able to use these natural substances that are often in the kitchen to be able to beautify your skin and we have very specific targeted things as well for acne um, and to be able to clear up the skin so be sure to check out that playlist now tip number eight is some yoga facial exercises and this is something that yeah years ago um, yeah I got a lot of feedback positive positive about doing yoga facial exercises here on YouTube. So I want you to join me in on this one. This is one of my all-time favorites. This is the one that often I'm going to do at a stop sign. I do it at all times when I'm watching, you know, my programs on TV, I'm watching YouTube or Netflix or whatever. It's so easy to do and it's a full face workout because it's going to bring oxygenation and blood flow to your face, which is so important, whether it's for anti-aging, for lifting 
lifting the muscles in your face uh, to give you know that structure and to define the your cheekbones and your jawline it really is something that's fantastic okay so you're gonna join me now and I know and we laugh every time we do this you know practice behind the scenes before we come live <laughs> to air uh, on camera we're always laughing because yes dr. Janine looks like a goofball all the time so I can't see you you can see me <laughs> it's okay you can laugh along but we're gonna stretch our face and yeah we call this stretch face so we're gonna stretch our face, and the reason we're, why we're holding the skin, and let me just say, because a lot of people who do yoga facial exercises online, they don't explain exactly. I like to explain so you understand sort of the method behind the madness as to how I do certain things. But you're gonna hold your skin gently and a little bit taut because you don't wanna emphasize as you are working out your facial muscles, you don't wanna emphasize any you know lines or wrinkles that you may already have by doing the exercises. So that's that's why we hold the skin taut. Here we go, I know you're laughing already, it's okay. But we hold the skin taut and we're just gonna do big smiles as we're holding our skin nice and taut. Okay, ready? Let's do five reps. Five. See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> and yeah. It is fun, it is good, but I can already feel that that blood flow has come to the face. I can already feel those muscles working and the more you do this, it's remarkable because you'll need to do, it's just like working out your other muscles on your body. You need to do more and more reps to feel that activation. So yeah, you're gonna start with, you know, you can start with 10 to 15 reps of doing this. You can take a bit of a break and if you have more time, you can continue. You can also split this up, do this twice a day, three times a day. It's really up to you, but work you know, at your own pace. If you're feeling like it's too much, then you scale it back a little bit. But I, I can't wait to hear from you in the comments below how this is working for you. This was popularized, I'm gonna say about seven years ago um, on YouTube and other people are doing it, but you know, I, I wanna hear how it works for you and be sure to leave your, your comments comments down below but also if you've got questions about you know other things that you'd like me to share in terms of specific exercises to work on specific parts of the face then please let me know because again I'll follow your lead whatever you want to learn from me I am more than obliged to help you out and let's get to it now tip number nine so this is the meditation I know this is the part that a lot of you wait for <laughs> to get to in each of the episodes that we he have here on the Dr. Janine show. And it, it really is my favorite part of the show, doing meditation and, and I bring you in and we focus on specifically on that area that we want to work on in terms of getting healthier and maybe looking more youthful and, and just being our absolute best. So we're going to now, as we always do, we're gonna center our energy. Ideally, you're gonna put both your feet flat on the floor to get nice and grounded into your environment wherever you are and then you're going to close your eyes and you're going to take a few deep breaths in and out and just really focusing in your energy being nice and grounded and relaxed And just breathing in and out without stress, without too much effort, just allowing that breath to come in and out of your body. Now, if you have an area of concern with your skin, I just want you to focus on that area right now, bringing your awareness to that area on your skin. Or maybe you're just focusing on all of your skin with this meditation. Now bringing that positive energy from the universe, from above, down into your body through the top of your head. And 
and allowing it to go to every single skin cell. And going to the deeper layers of the skin, bringing rejuvenation, fresh blood flow, improving drainage of toxins and lymphatic fluid. And now allowing that energy and light to go up through the second and then the surface layer of the skin illuminating all of the skin cells from the inside out with that radiant energy that is healing, repairing, and rejuvenating all of that skin. Now going to your area of concern, if you have one, and focusing, almost like focusing a laser beam of light on that specific or those specific areas. And with that healing light energy, focusing specific on those skin cells there and allowing them to come to balance, to heal, to regenerate, and to be in perfect balance with the rest of the skin on your healthy body. And some more deep breaths in and out. allowing that healing process to continue. And when you're ready, coming back to the present moment, Again, being grounded, always giving thanks for that healing. And when you're ready, gently opening your eyes. And welcome back everyone. So I hope that worked well for you. I know it's something that I love to do uh, to maintain my own youth and the health of my skin. And I think it's something that we can all use as a tool. You don't have to pay any money. You don't have to go anywhere. You just have to tune in and use the power of the universe and the earth's energy and light to be able to heal your skin from the inside out. So I can't wait to hear from you, especially I would love <laughs> to see 
because it is remarkable. I love it when people send me their pictures. So if you're brave enough to do that, I would love to see your pictures. So if you've got a skin issue now and maybe you've got some acne or rash or something, you know, uh, take a picture. Don't be shy. Take a picture now. And I want you to prove it to yourself that by doing these tips in today's video, but also by doing that meditation that, you know, your skin can heal overnight. And I've seen it happen. So I hope that that is something that you will experience. Send me your pictures. If you've got questions, you know, or you, you've got those great results, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And I hope that you learned something new today. And be sure to share this video as well with someone that you think this information may help. Please give me a big thumbs up. I truly appreciate all of your support and your positive feedback. It's so fantastic and it really warms my heart. So I thank all of you. And remember to always take care of your good health and to do it naturally. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you.